Hello everybody, thank you so much for tuning in to tonight's success story. As you might have known, it's not actually night time, right? you can see the light there coming through my window. Um, but Martin and I are pre-recording this for Tuesday evening as he's going to be away at his lovely RVP retreat up in Liverpool. So thank you so much for joining us this evening. Um, I've had the absolute pleasure of doing a Discover Arbon with Martin before he came to my hometown of Hastings and um, it was really really fantastic he's a fantastic presenter really funny absolutely love your dry witty sense of humor um, and I just want to introduce you um, or get you to introduce yourself uh, I imagine there's not many people who don't know you but if you can just give us a little bit of an insight to who you are in the next five minutes and then I'll go through some questions and answers yeah, sure. Hi, and it's really delighted to be on the call and, and record it for everybody. And um, the funny thing is, you mentioned about um, the DA in Hastings. I not long got my car lent to drive, so it was quite a trek from Southampton to Hastings. I was very, very nervous about driving the distance, but you feel the fear and do it anyway. This business it was quite an experience for me, so that, I remember that that vividly. So yeah, my name is Martin McKenzie, independent consultant, executive regional vice president. I'm brief. Um, so my background is I come from uh, the north of Scotland. I come from a wee small town that nobody's ever heard of, but it's famous for being close to the Loch Ness Monster. So he was my neighbour and a flock of sheep too. Um, <laughs> I was a very obedient kid. I studied hard at school, went to university, did accountancy. I got my degree, um, but really accountancy wasn't my chosen career path. I really wanted to um, do something different. So I, I went into into corporate into railways so whether you think accountancy or railways whichever one takes the prize being equally as boring that's that's open to you to decide but um i i, I did enjoy working for the railways and i worked my way up the corporate ladder and um, got to fairly um a senior level with southwest trains now southwest railway but after about 10 years in corporate i kind of realized that um you know i was having less and less control of my life and working more and more hours for a company they didn't really value the contribution you could make to it. And that's a typical scenario for many, many people in corporate. Um, so I really wanted to have my own business. Um, I wanted to be free to be the one making decisions, making the creative decisions. Um, and back in 2005, end of um, early 06, uh, myself and my friend who's a doctor, Dr. Zavi Gudazi, also an independent consultant with Arbonne, we set up a cosmetic skin and weight loss clinic in Southampton. So we do everything from head to toe, top to toe wellness, kind of the joke is uh, um, Botox, boost, bums, and everything else in between. Um, but we're non-surgical, we're non so it's, um, we do weight loss, we do uh, intravenous drips, do hormone replacement therapy, uh, hair replacement, and non-surgical. So a lot of stuff, top to toe wellness. And um, I love our industry, health and wellness, obviously. I love what we do. Um, and we're doing it for like um, 13, 14 years now. And it provides a good lifestyle. However, we're self-employed and like any self-employed professional, if you're not at work earning, you don't earn income. If you're not at work, what you're doing what you do well, you know, if it takes uh, holidays or you go off sick, your income just knows dies. And um, I hadn't really appreciated that until someone shared with me the concept of Arbonne and the concept of a plan B income and multiple income streams. Um, you know, we, we thought we were you know, always good. We just saw our future as in our industry in cosmetic medicine um, and that was it until um, April 2012, time flies, we were introduced to Arbonne by a doctor colleague who just said to Xavier, um, you know, what would you do if you hurt your hand? If you're a doctor, you inject most places. Um, I don't inject, I have maybe have the odd Botox or two, but I, I stay the other side of the needle. I, I do the both the, the, the business side, the compliance side, kind of like a mini hospital, if you like. So that's kind of my role. But she asked Salvia, you know, if you hurt your hand, you couldn't inject patients. Now, this could be a dentist's hand, it could be um, a plumber, um, it could be a painter decorator, a dancer, someone that relies on your physical limbs to do your ink, to work your income. If something happened to you, what would you do? So he was asked, if you hurt your hand, Salvia, what, what would you do? Um, how to survive up your savings for. And we both collectively thought, holy cow, uh, what if, you know? And we'd never thought of that before because many people don't think of a plan B until they need to call upon a plan B but haven't got one because they haven't thought about it. And you only hear about this business when someone shares it with you. So we're eternally grateful that someone did. Um, and we actually jumped in first exposure. So we heard a presentation 
and we just literally signed up that night. Now, right. most people don't. Most people, many, many, many more exposures to sign up. We're kind of like the ideal, you know, we just did it. Um, because we just, we, I understood the concept of network marketing already. I had no hang up about um, network marketing. You understood it already. Um, and we just got started. I think my, my moral of my story is, you know, never prejudge whether someone gets it, will get it or not, want it or not, need it or not, or be good at it or not. It's only our role to share the opportunity. And um, if the name is, if your name is in your mind, put them on your names list, share the opportunity, you know, ask them to look at what we do. Because on the face of it, someone can look at me and Xavier back in 2012 and think, well, they're all right, they're successful people. Why would they want to do what I've done? Well, absolutely, you don't know what someone's situation is until you ask and share the opportunity. So never prejudge, just share. You have no control over the outcome. The only thing you've got control over is you asking. That's the most powerful thing. And I'm so grateful that someone did share. And we jumped in straight away because we knew our friend, trusted her. Um, we knew if she liked the products, they must be good. We did always try the products, we loved them, and we have them in our clinic as well, and recommend to our patients. But, you know, I'll talk about this later on in one of the questions. Um, you know, obviously we have a little bit of retail in the clinic, that's great, but that's not how you make your, um, you know, time leverageable income from just simply selling products in the clinic. So selling in a clinic or salon is not the panacea of success in our one. It's about building a team, um, um, duplicating what you're doing. So that's kind of my story. My, my, the moral is don't prejudge, just share um, and keep sharing and keep sharing until you get to where you want to be. Then you can sit on the beach in Maui, watch the whales dive out the water with a pina colada. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, 100%. And now you're executive, where are you now? Executive Regional Vice President, aren't you? So you've got yeah. um, Victoria RVPs now. Yes, Xavier and Rebecca, Rebecca Green. Oh, yeah, Rebecca Green. Yeah, amazing. So you're basically nearly there, nearly MVPing. Still building towards it, still building towards it. <laughs> But I, I intend to go to the beach of Maui in January. That's just put that up. Wonderful. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Congratulations. That's great. Um, so tell us then, you're obviously a very busy man. You've, you've got your clinic, which is hugely successful. How do you weave Arbonne in between, uh, obviously, what is, I imagine, a full-time job for you already? Yeah, and that's kind of the, because um, we're all busy people, you know, none of us having us at our hands. I would say if busy people are successful people for a reason because they can manage their time and manage their activity. Um, people that have got too much time on their hands, I don't feel my hand or heart are very busy, good and successful in Arbonne because, so I think busy, being busy is actually a plus. I have got a, it's still a full-time job in the clinic. I'm the registered manager, so I have legal responsibilities and HR responsibilities, all that kind of stuff. I have to manage it. So I am there four or five days a week. And they are busy, full-on days in a, in a sort of customer service environment. You know, you've got it's very reactive. We have um, therapists, another doctor, a nurse, and um, reception staff. But you react to what happens in the day. So you can't. You can go into your into work um, with an action list of things you want to do to, during the day. But events can overtake that, and you end up having your list not touched or just added to because you've been reacting to what happens in the day. Like most, a lot of people's jobs, you know, it's not that um, everyone comes in has a structure today. Often your structure changes based on what happens during that day. Um, clients run late, you know, um, things happen, and um, before you know it, your day's gone past you. So the way I try and do it is not a set like a set site, set time in my day for our bond. I will um, try and fit it in the pockets of time. I use that phrase a lot, pockets of time, where I come from the nooks and crannies of my day. So it might be a 15 minute here, I take out the, out the, you know, the clinic into my office and just um, do some asks. Um, it could be at lunchtime. It's kind of like pockets of time. I will, if I schedule one to one to office in the diary so the girls know I'm not in the clinic at that time. Um, but in terms of me um, taking time to ask people, get the invitations out there to, to look at what we do or to meet for one to one, to watch a video, listen to an audio. That's very much done in the, you know, in the post time I could find. I should have one to ones, obviously, but it's about just having it as a priority because if our one's not in your top, I say top three priorities in your life, one being your family and your health, second, probably your full time job, and third, our one. If it's not up there in your priorities in your life, then you're not going to make time for it. I think, and I, I kind of um, have this thing called toothbrush challenge, and um, it's kind of tongue in cheek, really, but it makes you think. You know, at night time when you're brushing your teeth and look in the mirror, 
Is the face staring back at you, smiling, knowing you've done all your candy business today? Or is it looking back at you with a bit of a wince, thinking, hmm, I've done nothing for our business today? Therefore, what needs to change tomorrow? So when you brush your teeth the next day, um, you know, you have got a big smile on your face because you know that you've done what you need to do. So I think if you're, obviously, you know, I am self-employed, so I'm kind of in control of my diary to some extent. And some people have full-time income jobs, um, not necessarily in control of, of their um, day, but you do get breaks, you get lunch breaks. And it depends how badly you want it. Yeah. You know, commuting to work on the train each way. That's time you can be asking people, sending texts, voice notes, etc. So, so just weaving it into a busy day is the way I do it. Rather than saying taking a set hour, except when I meet people one to one, that's taken out the diary and, and I will go meet for a coffee um, or a tea of biz. So that's kind of how I do it. It's just, it's in my mind all the time, it's priority. I don't want to end the day thinking I've done nothing for my business today. I want to end it thinking I've done something. So I'm that one step closer to my goal, which is obviously a nation. Yeah, fantastic. I think that's a funny thing, isn't it? Because without doubt, the one of the top two reasons that people say that they can't join the business is because they think they're too busy. And I 100% agree. I think you... You know, it's better being busy. You have more exposure, more people. You you operate at a higher vibration, so it's much more attractive than somebody who's not yeah. doing anything at all. So I always well, make sure they know that straight away too. Yeah. yeah. When someone says to me, if I get the objection, oh, I'm just too busy. I say, oh my god, great, you're busy. That's amazing. In this business, these people yeah. are successful in this business because you are, um, you know, you're driven and successful. And I do you feel felt found that you know I, I felt this um, I know how you feel I felt the same. But what I found was by just fitting in the notes and crannies of my day, we all find 15 minutes. And I did make a joke, look, we all at the end of the day at some point sit in the toilet and have time out for the day. You can send texts out from the toilet because no one's gonna disturb you. That door's locked, you're in the zen, you're in the zen, in the zen space. Just send some acts out on the loo. You've all got time. Busy people still got the toilet. Hey, let's not have toilet humor, please. No, no, I'm sorry, I love it. I used to be the same, and then I had a daughter, and now she decides just to join me when I'm in the toilet. So that time is completely, <laughs> completely. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, any any little minutes because you're right, it's minutes, isn't it? Or se seconds, even really, to make that initial contact with somebody. It's just yeah. I think what we do more is just think about doing it which burns a lot of energy and time for us rather than actually just being really active in that when we do have those pockets of time we yeah. do something rather than think about doing something so you seem to have shot to success but I'm sure as everybody you must have had some obstacles to come over when you were were in Arbonne what, what were your biggest obstacles two big ones for me despite 10 years in corporate having your business I was public speaking phobic and I had a fear of driving. <laughs> um, so my fear of uh, public speaking was quite ingrained. I, I remember when I worked in corporate, I'd have to go to the board meeting once every month. And I used to not sleep like before if you're sick. It was yeah. just, I did not eat. It was just that constant um, uh, fear. And, I, and it was just something I was able to. And, and I actually avoided a lot of public speaking engagements in corporate. I would avoid it like the, the plague. Um, so rather than... Um, exposing myself to it to kind of feel the fear to do it anyway I would recoil from doing it I know in this business in our bond we do it's about you know it's about stretching your comfort zone and facing the fear and doing it anyway um, and being brave and taking that step to doing something whereas previously I wasn't so I'm really grateful that kind of being in our bond has taught me to you know try and you know, stretch my comfort zone rather than live within it because that's where the magic happens outside the comfort zone of course so for me it was definitely public speaking and I remember when we first started um, uh, Dr. Zavi is a very, very accomplished public speaker. I would just kind of hide behind him. We do discover our world in Southampton. I'd set up IT, put up a projector, the screen, everything else, all looks dandy, then hand it all over to him to the presentation. Um, but then I thought, you know what, I've got to go over this um, because if I, if I want to, um, you know, succeed in this business, which I, I, I did and, and do, then I've got to kind of get over myself. So I started by doing my why, then a couple of slides, and before long I was doing the whole thing. But for me, it was I was also... Um, it was in November 2013, I got an email from Sarah Dunning um, and Gordon Fraser. They were doing a, success, a leadership academy in Guildford, Cobham, Guildford, yeah, Guildford somewhere. And they wanted me to speak 10 minutes on Genius Pads. That's the year uh, they were they were at least. 
I remember thinking that feel of dread, oh my God, there's like 400 people, 800 eyes staring at me, I'm, you know, and they're asking me, little of me. So I remember typing the email out to Sarah saying, um, I was basically replying saying I couldn't do it. Um, and then I thought, you know what? No, I've got to do this. I would press the delete button, delete all the texting. I wasn't going to do it. Oops, the video went off. Oh, no, she. <laughs> um, back. Um, and then I typed, says, I will do it. Amazing, thank you, send. And I thought, oh, that's it, I'm committed. So that was a 10 minute presentation. Even though I just stood there, reading my notes word for word, the fact I'd done it um, made all the difference. And I remember there was an amazing lady, air manager, Lisa Gratton, who's um, a different team. She was, it was her first big public speaking event. We both sat at the front, both equally nervous, and we kind of being, being in together kind of helped me as well. So um, yeah, that was it. And then in 2015, I was asked to do half an hour main stage training at AAC in front of 2,000 people in Birmingham. That certainly um, quashed my fear. So yes, I'm still a bit nervous. I get nervous public speaking. Even, even to discover our ones to like five people, I get nervous. I think that's good because you don't get, I think if you're too relaxed and too, um, I'm not. A sh I'm not a performer. I'm not a showman. I'm just a real, performing person. And I think if people see vulnerability that when you are presenting, and that yet I even now after seven and a half years, I have my cue cards that look a bit doggy, but I still use them in my hand. Partly because it looks relatable. If people think, well, if he can stand up there and do this presentation with cue cards, and I can't, then why can't I do it? You know, as in the person sat there. And also, I tend to talk for England, Scotland, Ireland, and Wales. So having a cue card keeps me on track, you know. So um, public speaking was definitely one of my huge ones, um, and I've largely smashed it. Though I am nervous, I did I do confess I got four hypnotherapy sessions to to help, which absolutely did help. But the, the key component is is just feel the fear, do it anyway, because once you've done it, you'll never go back to how you felt before. You 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 stretched it, um, and then my other one was fear of driving. I really. I used to work in the railway, so I got free train travel around the UK and Europe. So there was no incentive for me to learn to drive um, back then. And um, I, I just thought I, I, I'm a very happy public transport user, walking, cycling, taking the bus, the train. And that was it. I thought I'm never going to drive. In fact, I was quite resistant to learning to drive. My family was saying, You've got to learn. Think of the independence you'll get. And I was thinking, Nope, not me, not me. Well, I mean, humble pie now, of course. <laughs> so I am. Um, did have driving lessons many, many years ago, about 2005, with, with a manual car, and I had two encounters with a curb one with a hedge and gave up. So um, I thought, it's just not for me, I'm, driving is not on my radar. But of course, then, then I started Arbonne, and at some point, obviously, you see a region at some point in the future, and you think, okay, it's, it's in the future, it's not right now. Um, I thought I can deal with the driving later on, the Mercedes. And then kind of, I got to region in exactly two years, and then it was, I remember, thinking, okay, I've got to reach it now, I've got to start thinking about learning to drive. So um, my first car uh, driving lesson was a week before my car presentation, and my car arrived, um, and I couldn't drive it. I had L plates on for three months, oh, so oh, I need to drive and pass my test first time three and a half months later. But the funny thing is, my car presentation, because I ordered my car new off the, off the, off the Mercedes-Benz conveyor belt, um, with all the extras, thrown in there as well, like the lane that says park, all these things to assist you as a nervous driver. I got every gadget and gizmo going on a Mercedes. Um, it had to be made, specially made, so it wasn't already in the UK, so they had to make it in the, in the production line in well, Frankfurt or somewhere. So it would be, eight, no, it was 12 weeks before it would arrive. And I wanted my car presentation before Vegas that year in 2014. So the, the guys at Mercedes-Benz in Southampton very nicely lent me for the day um, uh, spanking you, A class, that was one of the, the wife of one of the show, show, show guys. So I couldn't even drive it. So it came, they actually drove it to the hotel for me, but it was the AMG model, the, the, the big monster of a mod, model parts on my car. So the car you see in my car presentation pictures, I couldn't even drive it. It was nice to me for the day. Um, it was so nice to do it, but I just sat behind the wheel taking the pictures thinking, I'm such a fraud, I can't even drive this thing. So I thought it kind of kicked me into to action to um, have lots of lessons I, I did. Because honestly, a Mercedes-Benz with L plates on is so wrong. <laughs> it's so wrong. <laughs> and my partner was my chauffeur for a few months. And then um, I thought, no, no, he's not going to get the, the benefit of this. I've got to learn, this is my car, I've got to learn to drive this thing. So I did, and I passed first time. And now my second Mercedes-Benz, I've upgraded to a bigger model. So um, it's, uh, it's all good. But I'm really proud and pleased to say that my very first car 
is a Mercedes Benz. <laughs> wow, and also one that's just been given to you. Very that's nice car. Lovely, isn't it? I think Hetty Gifford was the same, wasn't she? She didn't know how to drive, and she learned to how to learn to drive to get her car. And it was a few people actually. That's what I love about Arbon. You have you naturally have to overcome all these things in your life, which are non Arbon related, but somehow you massively benefit in lots of other aspects of your life, don't you, from just being involved um, in Arbon. Yeah. And that's why they think they're often referred to as a self-development company wrapped up as a skincare and wellness company because it yeah. really is it affects so many aspects in the life and you do become a bigger and better version of yourself in the business you know? yeah yeah no i love it so what's your favorite thing about being a, a regional vice president there's quite a few perks i suppose um, yeah. yeah i mean i obviously i love the car and i think that the independence has given me um i no longer have to rely on the timetable which is amazing um, and trades are so expensive, and I got to pay for it. Um, but yeah, I think um, the car is amazing. The income is, is is great as a plan B income for me right now. And um, obviously, my plan is obviously nation ENVP four wide five wide twenty wide. Why not? You know, um, annual holidays in Maui. Um, but I'm, it's, the, the income is amazing. It's great. It just gives the extra peace of mind that as a self-employed professional, you've got a plan B, an extra income stream coming in. The gifts our one give you are amazing. Obviously, I'm off to VP retreat on for Tuesday, Wednesday. You know, we have the most amazing. Our one is loving on you, um, and I, I think that's amazing. Obviously, the flowers, the, the gifts at Christmas, and the um, chocolates of Valentine's, or the flowers, the chocolates of Valentine's Day. It's amazing. Um, and I always relate it back in the Discover Our presentation when we talk about the, the incomes. You know, our one is loving on you. So the money that they're loving on you as a thank you for building the network of consumers and consultants using and recommending their products. Um, it's money that, that, that that's new, it's, it's going to us consultants, rather than them saying, paying the models to flip the hair and say they're worth it and advertising the shops. So the, the money's being diverted to the people, as in us, to create that, and because our one's loving on us for creating that network of consumers to use their products. Um, and I think it's such a fair, ethical way of doing it, um, because we know, love, and use our products Unlike if you go on TV, you flick the hair. Do you think they're really sitting there with a hair dye in their hand? I don't think so. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so um, there's lots of perks to being, to, to being a VP and, um, you know, and obviously um, the more to come at Nation. So I really, <clears throat> you have become a bit of an expert in the world of retinol, uh, obviously because of what you're doing and you have a lot of exposure with them. Um, you know, people who are having non-cosmetic procedures with your clinic. Um, so I'd love to get... Um, Firstly, your three top products that we do and why they're your top products. And then just have a bit of a conversation about, because I'm, I'm speaking to so many more people that are venturing down the road of Botox and fillers. And I'd love to get a little bit of advice for the people who are listening on how to talk to those people about our products and how they can actually incorporate them into, you know, into uh, their skincare when they've been using um, Botox and fillers. Sure. Well, my top three products are um, the Genius Pads, for sure, um, and the new Retinol Essence. I've probably worked them as a, as a pair now, so Pads one night, the new Essence, um, the Canvas for Essence the next night. So think of that as, as because the reason why is um, it's a vitamin A retinoid-based product, um, and there's two things you want to have in a proper anti-aging regime. One is vitamin C, we get it from the RE9, and the other one is vitamin A, retinoid, get it from that genius intelligence pads. Um, so in, in general terms, a retinoid does amazing things to your skin, does five key things. First one is it helps to increase your cellular turnover. So imagine like um, the, the, bit of, the skin you can touch and feel, the, the top layer, epidermis, is like, imagine a brick wall um, with lots of bricks, that's the skin cells, and the mortar is... Um, the glue holding the skin together. Um, so the bottom layer of the bricks is where the skin cells are um, made, and they kind of, um, over time, they work themselves up the top and they shed off. So it's like a constant moving conveyor belt. So this um, um, process of turnover, a retinoid helps to increase that turnover. And what that does, if you imagine a baby's skin is very, very thick, plump, and looks very, very dewy glow, that's because the top layer of skin, the layer you can touch, is, is quite thin and the living layer below that the dermis is thick and plump full of collagen a moisturizing substance called hyaluronic acid and um, elastin 
as we age, it reverses. So the living layer, the bit you can't see that's under the skin, gets thinner, and your top layer gets thicker. So you get this sort of dull complexion, and your skin starts to lose its glow. Um, so what retinoids do it helps to reverse that, or you know, it helps to reverse it. It does. It helps to reverse it. Um, so you increase cellular turnover. That's point number one. You increase blood flow to the skin, so into the capillaries that serve the skin. What does more blood to the skin do? It, create, it brings more um, oxygen, nutrients to help support the skin, the healthier looking skin from an anti-aging point of view. Um, retinoids also help pigmentation, so age spots, liver spots, sun spots, whatever you want to call them, they, because of UV damage, there's nothing to do with liver. Um, they help counteract pigmentation as well. Help and um, kind of excess oil as well, so it's great for oily skin to help counter that. Um, and finally, in the living layer of the cell, so of the skin, sorry, the dermis, where your collagen, elastin fibers are, and the, the, the substance called um, hyaluronic acid, um, in that part of the skin, um, that's the, the, the kind of anti, you want to stimulate that one. So a vitamin A in its most active form will help your body make um, collagen and elastin. So it stimulates the fibroblast cells, the cells that make collagen and make all these good stuff. Um, but because when they turn 30, they go into a dormant sleep mode, so they stop making collagen, they just go to sleep, except when you cut yourself or injure yourself, they wake up, repair the wound, make collagen to support the wound, and they go back to sleep again. So until the age of 30, you've got active skin, after 30, kind of that kind of years, what collagen you have will last your lifetime, you've got to look after it. Um, so what a, a vitamin A kind of a retinoid will do is help stimulate those fibroblast cells to make collagen again and keep making collagen. But of course, we need to remember that our body is not a medical grade skincare, it's a cosmetic based skincare. So um, it, retino, retinoids come in all forms. Um, so a medical prescription strength will cause you to go red and flake and your skin, you want to scratch your face off. It's so active, you look like you've had a, a, a burns victim. But it does it for a reason. It's turning your skin over, it's hyper stimulating and you get in, over a period of, of weeks and months a real anti-aging effect. Now obviously in our bomb we haven't got prescription strength but it's an effective everyday retinoid product that delivers five benefits so it helps in all five of those aspects. So I think it's incredible and of course now in the genius pads it's, it's retinoate, it's a, it's a um, less active form of um, vitamin A but more active than you'll find in many of the shop based retinol products. But the canvas spot essence is a, um, um, a bit stronger than the genius pads and that's why they recommend not using it every night and recommend starting every twice a week or every other night see how you go i was fortunate enough to try this product back in november october time before it came out and i my, i've had everything done my face i've had peels everything else so i was using it every night and even with my face having done medical retinoids having had chemical peels my face burnt vengeance life you know it made my skin flake and peel so it's a really, truly effective retin retin vitamin A product. So the, the, the essence and the pads, I think working together is my one favorite, as in, of course, I one favorite. The other one is the Intensive Neal Serum, because it's literally packed full of vitamin C, and of course, the new formulation with its um, stem cells and peptides and um, um, alpha hydroxy acids, all, all the, the good stuff, the vitamin C is incredible. So um, if you imagine a brick wall scenario, what um, alpha hydroxy acids do, if you imagine the top layer is the top layer of bricks, so the vitamin um, the alpha hydroxy acid will dissolve the glue that's hot, the more to hold the bricks together, so it helps exfoliate, shed off the dead skin cells, so the bricks fall off if you like, so good for exfoliation. So um, you get a nice glow, you get a good skin texture, so working together vitamin A and vitamin C is a great anti-aging combination. And for me, the, the vitamin C serum, I also like the brightening serum as well, I actually use both. Um, just pump, pump all of my face and it, it absorbs in so well, it's amazing. The elixir of youth, uh, absolutely. But the vitamin C serum is just a great, it's so important. And I, I've heard it said before, it's the breakfast, lunch, and dinner for your skin mm. every morning. And vitamin C um, in an active form, it stabilizes vitamin C because a lot of products have vitamin C that's not stabilized. I was stabilized so that when it's exposed to air, it doesn't oxidize and become inactive. It it's, goes into the skin and it's active. So. Uh, it's full of antioxidants, which helps to counter free radicals. So from a 
pollution defense and a UV defense, it's incredible. Because if you use a vitamin C serum along with a sunblock, the synergistic effect is you get a better SPF protection than the sunblock alone, by a factor of about four. Um, and um, that's pretty powerful. Although do bear in mind SPF, when it says SPF 30, really it's an SPF of about 2.5 because we, we don't paste it on our skin like in a laboratory. We, we put a nice thin layer. So the effective SPF you get from a 30 is about 2.4 in okay. a laboratory study. But if you put a serum on, you can multiply it by, by, by about four. So you get an SPF of about eight to 10 in reality, not in the laboratory or the bottle. So the serum is my second favorite and my third favorite is the chocolate protein shake. I'm a chocolate, I'm a self-confessed chocoholic. I mean, I, I for me, the chocolate protein shake is like chocolate galaxy chocolate. Um, yeah. There's a see recommendation. Don't get paid for it. I love galaxy, um, but it's like liquid galaxy chocolate. It's so lovely. So I'm a bit nervous about the new formulation. I'm not trying the new one yet. I've got a few bags left of the older one with less sugar because I'm a bit sugarholic. So um, I will, as ENVP Devin Neal says, use it till you love it, and I will use it till I love it. So that's yeah. my three favorite products. <laughs> I love that. I love that. I'm very conscious of time for you and for and for me as well because it's a gorgeous sunny day and I know we're going to get out there and enjoy it. But um, just very quickly on um, the Botox fillers thing, is there any no-nos that we can do with people who have had Botox and fillers with our products, or is it is it fair game? Not fillers. I say just just Botox to be aware. If if anyone's using the Genius Ultra, it's not to use it for about um, several days after having Botox, simply because um, you want to let the Botox take effect and not um, be um, you know maybe it, it could trap to an adjacent muscle where it wasn't injected. The theory it's just theoretical, but it's possible. So just for the Ultra device, not for a few days after um, uh, treatment of Botox. Other than that, not really. Um, and I think our products, and you asked about clinics and things, and um, you know, in a clinic setting, obviously a lot of clinics have medical skincare. We still have a medical skincare range for Barchi in our clinic, because some people will always need a medical intervention, um, and that's fine, but for everybody else who doesn't want it, our one is there, because our one's got something for everybody. So I think our one fits nicely into a clinic situation. The unfortunate thing is a lot of medics just don't get it. They, they kind of have this perception that if it's not medical, it's not gonna work. Well, you know, I think I would count that by saying, look at our scientific advisory board, look at clinical studies, and try the products and, and see it for yourself. Um, you know, ours do stand um, tall and proud in terms of efficacy. Um, so I, I think um, for those that do get it, it's a great adjunct. It doesn't replace it, but it's great works together. Um, and we've got some of everybody. So, you know, for pigmentation, for um, acne, for anti-aging, for, for younger people, there literally something for everybody it does fit well into a clinic environment but don't think that um going salon door knocking or clinic door knocking will make you a big up of business it doesn't because i said before it's a little a little stockist in your network that's great but it won't create your residual income and um, otherwise you become a stockist in salons and clinics and they're a fickle bunch that can be easily swayed by the next biggest skincare brand so um the key thing comes from sharing the opportunity in the business with, with everyone in your life that you know and finding the reason why they want to do the business, and because that will stick, stick them at it. You know, find the why, and you build your network through duplication of a network rather than just duplicating it through salons and spas. Because trust me, if, if it worked and it was it was the panacea of success in Arbonne, then others would have done it beforehand. So um, you know, duplication is the key. Love it. And then my very final question, I always like to know, because I know that obviously when when you're in Arbonne and you're a lifer and you're in it for real, and it's a really a priority, it is very hard to switch off from it. But what do you do to switch off and relax? I go to the movies, the cinema. <laughs> I'm, a huge, a huge, I'm a huge cinema movies fan. I just love movies. Um, I know there's no QVs and TVs, but um, I, you know, when, I, when I do switch off, I'm off to, to, to the Odeon uh, or something, so to watch a good old movie. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's how I, I do. It just, it's almost escapism, I guess. But it's you've got, you've got to yeah, it's really important. Yeah. yeah. I and I also do meditation. So I find Miracle Morning, the meditation in the morning helps you calm your mind and switch off and almost get your mind ready for the rest of the day so you can hit the day running. I'm a huge fan of Miracle Morning. Do it six, five days a week at 6.30 in the morning on Zoom until 7 a.m. 
Amazing. Well, thank you so much for spending some of your Saturday morning with me. And it's a pleasure, darling. Pleasure. Yeah. And um, I shall buy you a glass of, of uh, champagne at AAC when I see you. I look forward to it. Yeah. I look forward to it. Thank you so if much. If there was any questions too after the Zoom, feel free to reach out to me or come by with the record. record. It's absolutely fine. And, um, you know, because I do talk a lot on the video to cover questions. So if you want the answer to the question, I'm happy to type them out or do a little video to cover anything else you want. Oh, you're an absolute superstar. So the real pleasure. Enjoy your weekend. Oh. Thank you so much. You too. Bye. Bye-bye now.